Everyone, we're calling to order the Commission on the Use of Publicly Owned Properties, COOPA, to our um, meeting on October 16th at Town Hall at 6.30 p.m. Welcome, everyone. This is, by, way, by the way, not a town meeting. Uh, we have people in attendance. They're going to make some public comments. So um, this is why we're passing around the sign-in sheet so that we, are, we can put it in the minutes. So I thank you in advance, you know, for doing that for us. Uh, at this at this time, I'd like to call uh, Richard Forsilius up uh, to speak to us, and uh, he represents the Woodbridge Park Association, and um, he's going to talk to us about Coopop, how Coopop can collaborate with uh, the Woodbridge Park Association, and then at the same time, he is also. Um, in charge of the projects for the Woodbridge, uh, or rather the Boy Scout Troop 907, is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you the the leader, the scout leader for that group, or? I serve as a committee chair in chartered organization representatives. So, in Boy Scout troops, you have a scout master, and then you have an adult-led committee that actually runs the business side of the troop. So I chair that committee, okay. and I also work as a representative between First Church and the troop. Okay. So is, are you involved with the other troop, troops also? Or uh, just well, yeah, liaison, and, and I attend uh, some of the, uh, good to know. what we call the district meetings. So, uh, yeah, I run into folks from the other troops all the time. Well, we always try to service. support. We always try to support each other. Okay, great. Well, we welcome you tonight, and thank you very much for coming to present to us on uh, such short notice. We really appreciate it. So. Oh, my pleasure, and welcome everyone. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been a board member of the Woodridge Park Association for 25 years, and I currently serve as president. This is my second term. I think you all know that we have responsibility for the Alice Newton Street Memorial Park just next door here. And we have two other properties in Woodbridge, uh, what we call the Newton Road Park, and we have a uh, property on Northrop Road. Um, and in Woodbridge, we really have three entities that manage our open space and our uh, conservation. We have the Land Trust also, uh, which has many, many parcels around town. And then, of course, we have the town of Woodbridge um, through the Conservation Commission and uh, Coopop or what have you. So we always try to work collaboratively on our open space and really trail maintenance efforts uh, throughout the town. Um, but with the, uh, with the Woodbridge Park Association, we have a 21-member uh, board of directors. Um, my wife Debbie's here, and she's chair of the nominating committee. We can always use new members, so. Uh, yeah, an opening. Yeah, and uh, we, you know, we're 501C3. Uh, yeah, a nonprofit. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, we work solely uh, with donations. Uh, I have an annual letter that's about to go out. It'll be published in any, all residences' mailboxes uh, before Thanksgiving. And we ask for donations at that time. Um, sometimes we are confused a little bit that people think that we are actually a town entity. They don't realize we're a nonprofit and what have you. Um, again, all volunteers, uh, we work out of a post office box and very limited uh, financial resources. Our challenges recently, um, the ash borer has been a big deal for us. We've taken out a lot of our trees near the uh, trails in the Alice Newton Street Park as, a, uh, as an issue there and as warned by uh, state foresters we've had come in and assess things. We've also inoculated some trees. So in recent uh, times, our focus has really been on park maintenance because of that work. And we, we have not really been able to put much time into our Newton Road Park, which stretches from uh, just on the north side of the high school up to Hampton Drive along uh, Newton Road in the back lots there and what have you. Uh, we have uh, put some time into that historically. We had a little picnic grove there. But uh, parking and access is very limited from Newton Road cars speed by there. We did acquire the parcel on the Hampton Road side, and there's a gate there, and that's better access. But again, it has not been improved recently. And I, I think we all know that we've been approached by the Trail Runners Club of the Amity uh, yeah, High School. Cross country, yeah. Uh, re yeah, cross country. And, and they're uh, talking to us about uh, Newton Road Park maintenance to maybe help us bring it back. Um, there is uh, a number of wet uh, crossings there 
Obviously, at the moment, things aren't real wet out there. They're fairly dry, but um, a significant amount of work would have to be done relative to plank walks and, and bridges to make it passable for the trail runners. Uh, we do welcome trail runners in the Alice Newton Street Park. We have them all the time. We have um, off-road uh, bicycle, uh, you know, just bicycle riders there. So Alice Newton is pretty much up and running, but it, it, uh, it, it's, it doesn't need work? Does it, it needs repair? Well, it, yeah. yeah. So we have two Eagle projects. We just completed one, um, which uh, was the signage on some interesting trees. Um, we had about 15 trees or so. And Dean Parkowitz of Troop uh, 963 completed his Eagle project there. Unfortunately, I have to report, um, we had to file a, a complaint with the police. We had some vandalism there. We've, we've had about six or seven of our signs have been destroyed in there. And uh, Nate Case has given me tremendous support, and I have a great uh, uh, maintenance committee. We're working on that. But we're also trying to investigate who's causing that vandalism. I've also warned for search so they know, you know, something right in this neighborhood is being uh, vandalized. Um, we've uh, been fortunate for many, many years. We haven't found any issues other than a small amount of litter in our parks, and, and, uh, and we're happy and proud about that. But right now we're dealing with that regarding that One Eagle project. Um, we have what's called the East Boundary Trail, um, which uh, uh, forks off to the right as you go down the main blue trail. Um, we're also talking with Felix Liu, who's the uh, uh, senior uh, patrol leader of Troop 907 about a, uh, an Eagle project there. Uh, some of our plank walks and bridges need some uh, updates and repairs there. So those are the two Eagle projects we have going right now. And frankly, over time, the boys have done a tremendous job for us uh, helping with maintenance. Um, so we, we have a, you know, a lot of issues that we deal with over time. Uh, we always look to the Woodbridge Land Trust for uh, collaboration opportunities. Um, we are going to have a park maintenance day this uh, Saturday, November 18th. We invite uh, Woodbridge Town folks to come and help. We just gather at the front of the park here at about 9 a.m. for that. Uh, we also have a um, board meeting coming up. Uh, November 1st, I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the date, yeah, November 1st. And as a board, we only meet three times a year. We're also uh, thinking about planning for next year, and we would welcome the, the town to uh, partner with us. We have partnered in the past on uh, Connecticut Trails Day. We've had t-shirts and what have you for people that are interested. Um, next year it'll be, um, I think it's Saturday, June 2nd, it's the first Saturday in uh, in June. And then we always try to do something around Arbor Day and we have our annual meeting May 2nd. So we stay uh, active. Uh, I have uh, subcommittees including maintenance and um, we have a, a web committee. Uh, we've had to really up upgrade our uh, website. Uh, we recently had a harvest hike uh, with the uh, students from Beecher Road School. It was extremely well attended. We had wonderful support from school administration and teachers there. We think it's a very a worthwhile event, um, so we like to do that every year. And another initiative I'm involved with, uh, partnering with Paul DeCoster in town, is a notable trees project. And we've got about 40 nominations in so far, and we are, uh, we, we actually need to schedule training. We're going to send the boys out, again, working with the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any interested parties to go out and, and verify these trees, uh, photograph them, and. Uh, estimate their height and uh, catalog them. We do think we're going to have some Woodbridge trees that will be uh, state champions out, out of this initiative. So it'll be a fun thing, a positive thing. It's been a little bit slow going, uh, but frankly there's been a lot going on relative to the park. So uh, those are my, my main um, initiatives that we have ongoing right now. Okay. Comments or uh, thoughts? I'm a little concerned about Asplen. Aside from the, what it looks like a massacre, are you aware that the people doing the cutting come from Maryland and Maine? I was wondering if there wasn't possibly someone in Connecticut who could cut trees. We don't use Osplend, I don't know. I work, we work with uh, Jim's Landscaping, it's uh, Jim Rawson out of Bethany, he does all our tree cutting. And, um, and he also mows our meadow. 
once a year. And like I said, we have volunteers, so who do a fair share of our work also. No, we, we, uh, no, we work with local providers whenever we can, certainly within the state. Um, relative to the trail runner, so I mean, that's been a, a question for us on our board. Historically, we've had some, uh, let's, I'll call it litter, left out in the area of the high school proximity on the north side there. Um, and some of our board members felt it was better to kind of let it be than to try to maintain it for student access with the concerns that students might access it. At times they're unsupervised and, you know, leave trail of things behind like litter, for instance. But uh, we're, we're going to welcome uh, the proposal there and, and we love the fact that the cross country uh, students love to, you know, like to run through the trails. We think it's a great safe place for them to do so. And um, are there funds to help them um, with their projects or? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know yet exactly. Um, we do have uh, some maintenance uh, money in the budget. I mean, my uh, annual letter will be, go out, will be going out soon asking for contributions. I have um, one uh, local philanthropist, let's say, I'm speaking to anonymously who would like to uh, you know, let's say pay directly for materials, then put it more in the general fund, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, so we're looking at it and talking to that uh, that couple also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that's a way. Um, there is a, a new grant opportunity. I'll note uh, from the uh, the state, um, and but it's more oriented toward uh, the open space acquisition. And another thing I've, I've been doing is I've been working with the Connecticut Land Trust too. I went to a summit recently and we want to try to collaborate the them, them best we can. Right. I think in Woodbridge, we've got to be proud of our open space and especially I'm proud of the Woodbridge Park Association. We think we're the fourth oldest land trust in the state and we have a you know 21 member board is, is pretty comprehensive. Well, thank you very much. I think at this point in time, I'd like to also mention that um, we did have a trail master, Mike Walters, mm -hmm. and he's no longer a tra our trail master. He, he uh, retired, and uh, so the spot is available. So if there's anybody interested in being a trail master, um, please spread the word that you know the town is looking for uh, a trail master. A actually, he did it for many, many years, and it was volunteer. So, um, you know, it's it's going to be um, hopefully a, a position that we can fill quickly. But I think it's going to be um, difficult to to replace him. So, but thank you for coming this evening. And um, the other thing I think we need to also mention is that all proposals from the Boy Scouts need to come to Coopop and then at the same time after they come to Coopop they will go to the Board of Selectmen for final approval. So the Board of Selectmen makes the final approval for all um, projects on, on town-owned town -owned trails. So obviously these trails are um, not town-owned uh, Right. So, um, relative to Mike Walter, now in the 40 years, the last 40 years at the Woodbridge Park Association, we've had two park superintendents, mm -hmm. Wynn Hubbard and Mike. Mm -hmm. And Mike has indicated to me he also is interested in stepping down as our superintendent. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. he is continuing to this point, so he hasn't officially stepped down. Okay. But we too are, are looking for that. And that case has provided tremendous service oh, so good. recently. Good. Well, thank you again for coming yeah, this evening, my and uh, we'll you. continue to communicate All right. and Thanks. collaborate. Thanks thank you. All. all right. Cindy? Yes. Please. <clears throat> so now we have Cindy Anger, who represents the uh, Woodbridge Land Trust. You're the Secretary or treasurer? <laughs> <laughs> I am on the board of directors and I'm its secretary. Secretary, yes. very good. Okay. I want to thank you here. also for mm -hmm. filling in mm -hmm. short notice for us. Again, we need to understand, you know, your your role and uh, especially since um, you have uh, pretty much um, worked out the the situation with the um, Chestnut Grove, uh, or you. Uh, uh, 
have that approval of the, what is it, the disease control? Um, or no? I'm not sure what you mean by approval. Well, the disease control is working with Dr. Arnold, mm -hmm. um, Phil Arnold. Right. Yes, and so the wasn't Chestnut that? Foundation. Excuse me? The Chestnut Foundation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So didn't it go through um, the Woodbridge Land Trust? Originally, the project. Right, yes. right, right. Yes, yes. Uh, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. So thank you to Rich. He essentially laid the groundwork. We do many of the same things. We are a tax exempt, all volunteer organization. We are wholly supported through donations. Mm -hmm. um, we, if if they're the fourth oldest, we're probably the fifth oldest land trust mm -hmm. in the state. Um, we we have a slightly different. Um, focus in that we own land outright, um, almost 300 acres in Woodbridge, and we have conservation easements on approximately 600 acres. Um, we also work with the Boy Scouts. Um, there was just a, an Eagle Scout project completed on Fitzgerald property that is town owned. The, the trust does not have any interest in that right. property, mm -hmm. um, but we did finance the project. Mm -hmm. Um, we also just recently, last spring, there, an Eagle Scout project was completed in Milford Meadows that involved building a boardwalk. So throughout the years, we've, we've partnered with the, the Boy Scouts on Eagle Scout um, projects. Most recently, um, we have been walking our properties, um, ensuring that the trails are open. We clear our trails as a board. Um, we are developing a volunteer program now. Um, looking for encroachments where they may happen to be or not. Um, we're interested in being good neighbors, we're stewards of the land, um, and our focus is education and open space preservation, conservation, and protection. And with that in mind, we just recently acquired 11 and a half acres on Osborne Lane, um, just near a McAbee farm. I think it's lots 4, 6, 8, and 12. Um, That's by Ford Road. Um, it's down, down yeah. in the valley a little yeah. bit more than mm -hmm. that. And it actually um, is very close to the Naugatuck State Forest and, and across the street to some land we currently own. So we're, we were very fortunate to have a very generous donor and we were able to purchase that land. Um, in terms of um, what we're doing throughout the year, we have walks and last year we sponsored a lecture on the basis species. Uh, in fact, the Park Association was a co-sponsor of that. And where we can, we try to uh, work with the Park Association and, and generally um, organizations in town. So um, I'm, I'm happy to answer questions you have about the trust and what we're doing. OK. So um, I think you pretty much answered all of them for me. Does anybody else have any questions? I think it's no, important yeah, first. No, there's no new Eagle Scout projects that are in the works or not completed at the... There's the one um, by Andrew Burford that is just completed. We haven't signed off on it, um, but we, we will be doing that shortly. Um, the Eagle Scouts do a wonderful job. Every project they've ever done for us has come in on time, on budget, and is beautifully done. And I wish I could say that about contractors in my house. Um, so, but we look forward to another project come, um, come um, fall, this fall, next spring. So, and you know, just, just for background, we do um, manage the chestnut orchard. I assume there are questions about that or not. Mm -hmm. um, and that project is ongoing. The research is not complete. Um, the Chestnut Foundation tells us they need at least two to five more years to complete the, the research on that project. Um, you may or may not know that the trees don't belong to the land trust, the nuts don't belong mm -hmm. to the land trust, and so we really are just um, managers of that mm -hmm. project. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> okay, we do have a quorum this evening, and uh, thank you, David, for joining us as our liaison for the Board of Selectmen. And Lori Miller, thank you for joining us also. She uh, is also a liaison 
for conservation. And um, we mo we're moving to the approval of the minutes before we go to public comments. So everybody received the minutes. Um, any changes to the minutes? I have a motion to approve the minutes as written. All right, Lori, and second by Leslie. Okay, all in favor? Okay, yep, okay. All right, so very good, thank you. All right, we're moving now to the public comments. So who would like to be first? If you would just come up and give your name and uh, uh, your address. Uh, in spite of the fact that you signed in for us so that we have it. And um, if the list is going around, if everybody has signed, we would like to get that list here also, if that's all right. Yes. Information that would be pertinent, that would be better presented before the comments? I don't mean to tell you how to find me. Information would be that TPZ um, approved the the park uh, at the Fitzgerald uh, Park. And, uh, maybe you could speak to that uh, yeah. since you were at the meeting. There was yeah the, um, the the the, uh, the dog park came up for review before the uh, TPZ and they approved it uh, on their end. Mm -hmm. So now they have <coughs> moved it forward to both Coupop and to the board of selectmen right. for further review. Anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, regarding the dog park? Yes. And that's that's pretty it. Pretty much a lot. Oh, of okay. From, from All right. The, yeah, okay. There. I did hear uh, also that uh, the the property where the um, the uh, Chestnut Grove uh, is one point five acres. Right. Okay. And. Uh, it's possible, I heard, that the, it, the area where the trees are can be cut off or separated from where the dog park can be inside the enclosure. So I also, that, that's a possibility. It's not, you know, again, that's something that the Board of Selectmen has to approve, but there was talk that, you know, that it can't, it's something that can be um, accomplished. But, Again, the Board of Selectmen has to approve that. So, okay, welcome. Your name and your address, please. My name is Lynn Donato, 23 Metler Street, Woodbridge. And this is a little boy who was a rescue from our shelter from 2010. And he's come to, with me to many meetings regarding adorable. animals. Thank you. Um, it's going to be short and sweet. It's coming That's from my heart. <laughs> It's 74 words, I counted. Um, uh, what I'd like to say is that uh, I just wanted to express how happy so many of us are at the prospect of having our own dog park. And it is going to mean so much to many of us on so many levels. Firstly, our dogs will have a chance to socialize with other dogs, which is an important aspect in animal behavior, as we all know. I mean, a lot of us have learned that by now, that they're just not all friends all the time. And it's good practice for them to get to know one another on a very protective basis. Um, secondly, it will give their owners a chance to meet and greet and socialize with one another which is wonderful because I've been living here for 46 years. I know a lot of people, but I would love to know more. And knowing them through our animals is a very good opportunity for me and I'm sure a lot of others. Animals are connection, are our connection. And finally, I think a dog park would be a wonderful addition to our town and I'm sure many people will come to it. And I don't think anybody will be dissatisfied with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, we'd like to keep the meeting moving because we really don't have a lot of time. So I'd like to limit also the comments to half an hour. So, hi. Hi, I'm Miriam. I live over at 14 Nettleton Drive. I've lived in Woodbridge for nine years. And your last name, Jane. 
Okay. Mary Ann Chang. Oops. Before moving to Woodbridge, I lived in California, and I was a professional dog walker and dog trainer for dogs all over the Bay Area, and I have some advice about what we could do for our town to make it more safe, more inviting, and a way to bring more people and dogs together. There are a lot of well-established dog parks all over the U.S., but there are several cities that are ranked as the best cities in the country for dogs. I highly suggest looking at their dog park structures and how they manage problem dogs, vagrants, although I don't see many vagrants in Woodbridge. Um, it is important to have a safe space for smaller dogs versus larger dogs. Mm -hmm. And the more space, the better. Yeah. I think if we can include as much of the available land as possible in a dog park, that's going to give us a lot more success in dog-dog interactions and people interactions. Not all people get along either. Um, <laughs> so um, I would like to also suggest making a partnership with some of the local dog training uh, facilities. There's some in Hampton, there's some in Cheshire that would probably offer wonderful <coughs> free education to help people understand dog language, learning how to walk a dog, learning how to keep your dog safe. Um, I would offer to do all of that. I don't know if that's an option. Um, I think it's really important to have a dog park. It really does help people come together. And I have not lived here for 40 years, only nine. I don't know very many people. Um, but my favorite people my whole life tend to be other dog people. And it would really help bring some camaraderie and some friendliness to our town that I think is necessary. Thank, Thank you. very much. I'm Bond uh -huh. Lake, Beach Road. Um, I thought, um, I actually had someone measure the enclosure mm -hmm. because it was confusing the daylights out of me. Um, the tree situation, um, we're not, I'm not exactly sure where they're located in there. Mm -hmm. Just as a bit of background for people who don't know, um, Dr. Philip Arnold has been um, conducting the experiments. They're not done. But he it said... sounds like it's going to take two to three more years before they are done. Yeah, yeah. but he <laughs> stated that dogs within there, even around the trees, would not damage the experiment at all, would not damage the trees. He said... I the, think there's a concern with the burrs. Right, so the burrs... Um, fall within a two-week period of time, same time every year. So his contention, you know, I said, uh, he's not so concerned that the dogs will damage the birds as the birds might damage the dog's paws. Right. So um, a couple <coughs> things could be done in, in regard to that. Like I say, uh, if, if the trees are literally along one small section, then just fence it off and never let the dogs mm -hmm. there. Uh, alternatively, for that two-week period, you just can't use it as a dog park. Mm -hmm. That's the, the cheapest way to go. Right. Um, the way I understand that it was left is that um, Brian Pines, the head of um, the president of the Land Trust, mm -hmm. after speaking with the town hall, is going to um, contact the American Chestnut Foundation to see what they're amenable to. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know, the Land Trust would come to some consensus and then speak with the Board of Selectmen. Um, what, um, what we did learn at the Board of Selectmen meeting last time was a couple things that were, um, uh, it, oh, if you didn't know, I'm really in favor of this dog park. <laughs> and, and, the, and we did a lot, of, uh, a lot of research on dog parks all over the area, whatever that lady is, yes, thank you. Yeah. And, um, and, and this lady here did some fantastic research. So we would go with a double gate entry system, an airlock, mm -hmm. to allow dogs to be leashed and unleashed safely. <laughs> And we would recommend uh, somewhere about 20% of the total enclosure be for smaller, more timid, older dogs. And um, we would recommend that the existing fence be reinforced on the bottom five feet up. Um, even though that fence is called a field fence, it's the strongest fence you can make. Um, to keep large animals out, it doesn't keep small heads in. Mm -hmm. So you get a smaller gauge and you go up and it would be a completely strong enough to attach it to the pressure treated wood posts. Mm -hmm. um, insurance, setting the land trust issue aside, the property insurance would cover the dog use. There's no extra premium or penalties for a dog park. 
and liability. Jerry Weiner confirmed that Connecticut is a strict liability state. Um, one strike and you're out. It's always the owner's responsibility for any damages or um, I issues that are created by uh, by the dog. So, um, so we were good, glad to hear all that. Okay. So I think that's it. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks. Um, I'm Amy Morella from 184 Rimmon Road. Um, I represent a minority view here, I think. Um, and uh, I wrote, wrote my comments down. I'd like to read them for the record um, as well so everybody could hear them. Um, so to you all as members of uh, COOPOP, I want to start off actually before my letter and just say I do commend the volunteer effort um, and the interest in a dog park. The bottom line is I just don't think a dog park should be placed at the Fitzgerald track. I think we need to find a different location in town. Um, and as a daily walker of the Fitzgerald track, both in <coughs> summer and win winter, winter, I'm offering these comments as well as the owner of two much loved dogs. Um, I do want to start off by thanking COOPOP um, for the focus you have been giving to the Fitzgerald Tract. You, your recommendation to restrict car traffic beyond the parking lot has been a welcome enhancement um, that um, adds to the safety and the pleasure of walking on the trails. For background, in the 1990s, the Conservation Commission promoted the construction of the, the walking trails that we now enjoy. Um, I've learned from the former chair of the Conservation Commission that they proposed the trails both so folks could enjoy walking, but also to avoid Fitzgerald becoming just another track to playing fields for organized sports like baseball and soccer. The Conservation Commission envisioned a unique experience in town, allowing residents to walk safely while enjoying the beauty and tranquility of the track's rural and agrarian landscape. That current proposal for a dog park apparently stems from the opportunity to use the existing fencing, but as Bonnie mentioned, the existing fencing is inadequate. Um, there's going to have to be substantial new fencing to create a dog park that works at the Chestnut Grove site, as well as what we've just heard about contentious con concerns about whether the Grove could be used in uh, the, in the next two to three years or not, given the existing uh, chestnut experiment. So given those concerns about the adequacy of the existing fencing as well as the timing issue, it's my hope that Coopop and the dog park advocates um, will agree that the town should pause and consider more carefully where to place a dog park. Um, the country club may be a great spot as part of a larger recreation plan, or perhaps there's an ideal site close to existing playing fields. My view is that the Fitzgerald Tract, and especially the Chestnut Grove, is the wrong place for a dog park. As a general matter, a dog park is not appropriate for Fitzgerald. As a permanent recreation structure for dogs, as well as hu humans, are incompatible with the track's character. More specifically, I think the Chestnut Grove location is problematic for several reasons. First and foremost, the Grove is a long way from the existing parking lot. Uh, Coopop has wisely recommended to the Board of Selectmen, and the Board of Selectmen has adopted restrictions on driving cars past the parking lot area. But if the town builds a dog park, it will encourage folks to ignore the new driving restrictions so as to access the dog park more easily. Let's face it, who doesn't try to get the most convenient spot when you go, park, go shopping or even when you go to the gym? That's human nature. I've seen dog, uh, dog walkers even now accessing beyond uh, what the limits are supposed to be. Um, and uh, I think if you build the dog park there, you're just going to have more traffic problems um, on the Fitzgerald track. Second, um, the development of a dog park may indeed increase the number of people who want to visit the Fitzgerald track, placing a strain on the existing parking area. In 2015, I kept a log of, for almost two months of the number of cars that I saw parked at the track's lot. And, and, and it's important to note, I wasn't trying to get the, the time of day when the, when the lot was most used. I was just noting anecdote, you know, what, how many cars were there. I was counting them when I visited. And because I have, do not work, 
I was able to go mostly during the day, which is not actually the time when it's most used. It's most used on weekends, and it's most used toward the latter, the end of the day. Um, and as you see from the log which I attached, um, there were often many cars at the lot, especially in the late afternoon. Um, I can say anecdotally that traffic seems to have gotten even worse in the two, two years I've been there. Often the pot, pot lot is nearly full. Um, so I think that the town needs to carefully consider uh, what the impacts would be on parking. Uh, and I, for one, would not favor expanding the parking lot. Um, and it's certainly, if that were to be necessary, that would be an increased cost that would need to be factored in. Um, now, the other thing that I've heard is whether that there's a possibility that there are other t people from other towns as well as our own who might want to use this parking lot, uh, this uh, dog park, if one were built. For example, I understand that there are some residents of Orange um, who have been advocating for a park in their town, and so far their town has said no. Um, if we would build one, they might what, well want to use ours. Third, citing a dog park um, is going to encourage others to advocate for further development of the Fitzgerald track. Two years ago, someone suggested to our first selectman, Ellen Scalatar, that the town construct a yoga platform on the track. That was referred to Coupa, um, and that's actually why I did the log two years ago, um, because um, I was concerned even then that about traffic. Uh, if the town says yes to a dog park, what's the basis to say no? to another uh, proposal. Fourth, the current section of the walking trail that abuts the Chestnuts Grove that is just behind it is especially tranquil as it's sighted far away from any road. If the dogs were to be playing in the grove and using the dog park, this tranquility would be diminished for people who are trying to walk along the trail. For all these reasons, I just believe that the Fitzgerald Track Chestnut Grove is not a good place for a dog park. The town should look carefully at other town properties and choose a location that offers better parking and more compatible adjacent uses. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I am Michelle Dinsey at Timber Lane. I am not a very long time resident of Woodbridge. I've only lived here for about five and a half years, uh, but I do love it. And um, I'm very excited to come out in favor of a dog park in the Fitzgerald Tract and in the Chestnut Grove area. Um, the Chestnut Grove uh, was presented to us originally as a finished experiment, and clearly it's not, and we get that. And actually, we're very excited by the fact that it's to be continued and further not to be continued for one or two years, as um, our land trust person mentioned. Uh, but we were told by Dr. Arnold that he would like to continue to collect the burrs in perpetuity. I love that word, in perpetuity. It's something that can continue to happen even if there's a dog park there. In fact, many of the people who are interested in having a dog park recall their fifth graders from Beecher Road, now 20, 21 years old, were part of the group that went and, and planted those trees. This is a very much loved agricultural experiment here, and it's to be treasured. I am new here, but I see that. I, I get that it's, an exciting thing to bring back a species that, that could possibly become extinct. Um, we are very excited to work with these people. We would love to learn what needs to happen to make sure that those birds are collected appropriately and to make sure that they don't hurt dogs and that they um, are taken care of and that this experiment continues. Our proposed name for the dog park is the Chestnut Dog Park Cooperative. Um, and we aim very much to be cooperative, and we love that it's a chestnut grove. Um, I'd like to answer some of Ms. Morello's comments about safety. Dogs are dogs. <laughs> um, most of them are 
pretty wonderful animals who love humans because they have been domesticated for thousands of years. When they are on a leash, they become a little skittish. They feel um, that they aren't fully capable of defending themselves. So dogs on a leash are more likely to pull, to uh, lunge, to bark, or to do any of those kinds of things that people feel are aggressive. Not that they are aggressive, but that they that, that, that scare people. There are many, many people walking their dogs on a leash in the Fitzgerald track now, and most of the time that I've heard of people having difficulty, it's been with dogs on leash. We're proposing an off-leash park, and in all of the visits that we've made to many, many off-leash parks in Connecticut, essentially, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty peaceful. You hear the sound that is very similar to the sound of horses running. Um, you hear a lot of leaves crackling. You hear a little bit of which is love play. But um, you don't hear a lot of barking. And that area that is tranquil is an ideal place because it's far away from people's homes. I, I think it's reasonable that a person who owns a home would not want to have a dog park right next to them. I think it's reasonable that a person who uses a ball playing field would not want a dog park right next to them. Guess what dogs really like? Balls. <laughs> so that's not going to work out. Um, we think this is actually an ideal place. Um, the field fence that is there is the skeleton very much of what we need. It cost over $8,000 to build when it was built uh, 15 years ago, and um, its presence would significantly reduce the outlay of money that would have to go in to um, reinforcing it and to creating separations for small, timid, older dogs and making sure that there are um, wider gateways for um, maintenance vehicles to be able to get in. Um, it's going to make it much cheaper and that that cost is a cost that we are proposing be fundraised by us, not that the town pays for. Um, it also has come to my attention that the land trust is currently holding the insurance. The town can take over the insurance and we can save them that expense while still continuing the experiment. Um, I don't think that a dog park is incompatible with the space. There are people who are gardening there and doing beautiful work. There is a, in, in some months, there is a um, hockey rink, skating rink. Um, Skaters don't bother me. I don't bother skaters. Um, there are frogs that are unbelievably loud some months. I mean, really loud, like shrieking. But that's exciting because it's part of nature. And so are dogs. And so are people who love dogs. Um, I, I think this is a really great place. Um, I think it's, it's great because it's multi-use, because people are using it for their own personal fitness to get together with one person or another person, maybe to gather in larger groups. There's a little boy who, who gathers uh, butterflies. His parents make him let them go right away, but he's been doing that for six months. Everybody's following their own sort of passion there, and honestly, if you really think about it, I don't think anybody's hurting anybody else doing that. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Michael Broderick. A lot of people know me in town because I am the only veterinarian that uh, practices for dogs in town, although lots of other veterinarians live in town. Um, I want to make a bunch of comments about it because I think it's way overdue that we have it. Uh, I went to the group that's organizing their meeting and I was extremely impressed with the whole idea and how they proposed to do it. 
we are one of the few towns in the region that doesn't have one, first of all. There's only, I can only think of Orange, but I've been to many of them with my own dog since we don't. I lived here for 41 years, and as everybody you know, here knows, Woodbridge is a dog town. We don't, most households don't just have one dog, they have multiple dogs. And the other thing that uh, I want to point out to everybody is we're also an aging town. And what does that mean for aging dog owners? Older people with dogs, the dog sometimes, it's more dangerous for them to walk the dog than to bring it to a dog park because the dog may pull them over. Dog park is a wonderful place for our older residents with um, dogs to socialize with people. And Woodbridge can be quite isolating because we don't have a lot of places like that. All the dog parks that are well run in Connecticut that I've been to or in this area like Camden or Cheshire, they become communities where people sit and socialize and watch their dogs. And it's something that we're really, really lacking here. And I understand why the group likes the Fitzgerald track because as we were just saying, the fencing, some of it is already there. It needs to be added to, of course, and uh, to make the two sections. Um, the other thing that I also want to say is that if a dog park is well run, which this one I know would be with the group proposing it because I was so impressed how organized and how thoughtful they were looking at the rules of the best run dog parks and having those same rules be our rules. Um, they are, it's not a dangerous place either. Like liability is a concern on any town property. And by the way, Fitzgerald, when I was on the zoning uh, commission, Fitzgerald was given as a, a piece of property for town uses. I can't think of a more community use than a dog park like this. And although uh, I often agree with Amy about this, this is one area about town issues. This is one area where I disagree because it's already being used for dogs all the time. It's a, it's a small part of the track, just like we use other parts of the track for other community uses. And also, dog parks, the ones I've been to, they seem to have you know, different times that people go. So although traffic and parking is a concern, I don't see huge numbers at the other dog parks all at one time the ones I've been to, and I go during the day on my day off on Wednesdays and sometimes on weekends. And I, I see maybe four or five or six cars often at the Hamden one. So I don't think that's a huge, huge concern that should you know, destroy its possible use. And a well-run dog park, remember what we have in this area too, we have daycare facilities. So if you have all these rules, for instance, a community that says, Oh, that dog's an aggressive, you really shouldn't be here, which is going to be one of the rules. That's exactly what the daycare communities do. They look if dogs are properly socialized to be with other dogs. And that's why most well-run dog parks don't have uh, lots of problems like that because they're self-policing. And that's exactly how this group would be. So I want to give my strong endorsement. I really hope you guys will support this idea. And I think that the group proposing it is just amazing. They're going to run this park in a way that would be uh, really a model for the whole state. Okay, thank you, Mike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have like 10 minutes more, so if we could just I can do this speed quick. it up. <laughs> yes, very quickly. Thank you. Um, I just want to be clear, the Land Trust is not taking a position on a dog right. park. I understand that. That's not our right. watch. Sure but I have heard a few things here that I think need clarification. The first is the trust owns the fence. We don't own the trees. We don't own the nuts. Okay, so, so the trust has to make a decision what to do with the fence. Mm -hmm. Take it down or not. But I, I want to be clear about that. Right, right. The other thing is in terms of liability. If we're going to protect the trees, we can't have dogs near the trees. Because the fact is, the trust has to maintain insurance for those trees. So it's not really about letting the dogs be there except when the nuts are falling. They just can't if the trust has insurance obligations, and we do. Um, and um, 
Yeah. Lastly, um, <coughs> yeah. I just wanted to talk about protecting the trees a little bit um, because there is a, a concern about the number of dogs um, near the trees, perhaps urinating on the trees, digging around the root beds of the trees. So it's while it's wonderful for the dogs to run around and we understand that, our concern is in fact the trees. And so we would want those trees protected. So to the extent that, that um, land trust fencing is being talked about being used, I'm not sure that that's really um, viable if we're talking about the entire orchard being available to the dogs. Okay, thank, thank you very much for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? <coughs> My name is Rami Ackley, I live at Penny Seymour, and I too am a fairly new resident to Woodbridge. Um, I'm a former elementary school teacher, I just recently retired, and one of the pleasures of my life is taking my dog to the track, to the fields. And I also used to have a garden right next to you, as you recall, and I used to bring my dog into my garden, which was really nice. Since the town passed the leash law, I really can't go anywhere freely with my dog. And I'm aging now. I, I don't want to admit it, but I am not as young <laughs> as I used to be. And I do see a lot of elderly people walking their dogs. And it's really getting more difficult for me even to keep up with my dog. And I totally think my dog is more peaceful when he's off leash than when he's on leash when other people are approaching. I don't see dogs as any louder than people walking around the fields and the track with their children. I mean, to me, my dog is my child, and he yeah. never barks unless someone is going to come after him, and that's not going to happen in the orchard. The orchard would be, that, that track, that enclosure is not going to take away any of the peace and tranquility of the people in the gardens. So remember, I was in the gardens, and there were people walking around me all the time with their dogs. There are so many people there with dogs. They have nowhere else to go, basically, where they feel safe. And for me, it is about the safety of my dog. And also, I just want to say that I don't think parking is ever going to be an issue. Most of the people you see in this room are there already with their dogs. We never have to compete for parking, and we don't all go at the same time. I mean, now that I'm retired, I'm not going to be going at the busiest time of the day, which is usually between 5 and 6 when people get off work. And that's usually in the, you know, summer when you see more people active. As the days get shorter and it gets colder, you're going to see less traffic. I don't see parking as an issue. It isn't really an issue now. And there are lots of people running, jogging, walking, playing with their kids, and walking their dogs. And we all go there, and we live in harmony, and we live happily, all of us enjoying this. And by the way, I just want to say, I don't have kids, and I don't go to church, and the only way I've been able to socialize and get to know other residents is at that dog park or at the gardens. And I really value that as a place where I can socially get to know the people in the community. Unlike the people who have grown up here with their kids, the people that are new to this area have to find a place to socialize. And that is a very valuable place to socialize because it's outside. So I think we need to consider the new residents in Woodbridge as much as the ones that have been here all of their lives. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, okay, if no one's ever I just, do I pick them up again? Yes, please. I just want to quickly respond to like a few people. Um, every community surrounding Woodbridge has a dog park. The one orange is on the t border of Milford, Eisenhower. Does New Haven have one? Yes. Uh, Old Haven has more than one. Um, Nolivet Tech has a brand new one. Yeah. Bethany has one. They all have them. Okay. Our residents have been going to those dog parks. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not paying taxes, not contributing but using them and using their parking and their facilities, it's our turn now. And no one's gonna come to our dog park from another town because 
y'all want to go to the dog park that's down the road. You know, you know, it's inconvenient now for us to put our dogs in the car and schlep, you know, 15 miles to another town. You want to be able to do it before work or, you know, when it's convenient. So that's not going to be an issue. The people who are there now um, are the ones that are going to be there when there's a dog park. People, younger people tend to walk their dogs deep into the woods on the trails. I did that when I was younger. When you get older, you want a place that's flatter, no stumps and whatnot. So um, we've analyzed that parking, and we've looked at the times of the day, and we've talked to people. And any addition of people, it's not like there's a neon sign going up there, dog park in Woodbridge, we're just not going to pick up a lot of people. All right? Well, thank you very much. Appreciate all of you coming here today. And um, your comments have been du duly noted, and um, we'll put them in our minutes. Thank you. Okay, we're going to continue with our meeting. I have some handouts for you. Oh, good. Okay, okay. All right. Well, I don't have it here. I think it's just for the copy. Um, this is this is the uh, recommended best practices for the dog park. Here's the establishment from the American Kennel. I sent it to you. Yeah. I sent it to you via email. So this is just one copy. I just wanted you to look at it. Yeah. Who's who's there? No one has that position. Can you hear me? We, we need to continue with our meeting. We need to continue with our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. I just absorb that. Yeah. Yeah, I I I wouldn't be able to address that. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. You inspired. You inspired to be last you inspired me with the liability yeah. talk. Well, here's the liability issue. Right here. Oh, boy. It's just up to the owner. It's going to be the, the owner's responsible. Yeah. According according to our town attorney, he um, looked at the laws and um, the Connecticut statutes, and ultimately the owner is the responsible party. That's just general. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, so the, the the board of selectmen received several requests from residents in support of the establishment of the dog park in town. At its September 13th regular meeting, the board of selected acted as follows. Um, and this is what you had stated, uh, that uh, they received the response from TPC and the board um, also received updates from the town attorney and the town finance director and uh, the details. Basically, uh, uh, General uh, Jerry Weiner reported there are two Connecticut statutes that uh, govern this to some extent. One is the Connecticut has a dog bite statute that is a strict liability statute, which means that an owner of a dog is strictly responsible for any damage his or her dog causes to another person or another animal. Any bite, regardless as to who's at fault or what the history of the dog is, the owner bears the responsibility. So anybody using the dog park does it with the assumption that if the dog gets uh, unruly, the owner is ultimately responsible. The town is not responsible if the dog bites somebody, for example. 
The second statute states that any uh, recreational use is provided by the owner of the property, including the town, and there is no charge for that recreational opportunity when the town is immune from any kind of incident that happens at the property. As long as everybody is doing what uh, they understand, we're not going to charge. And so there's always a possibility that something could happen and the town could be involved in a lawsuit. But it looks like um, there's enough coverage with the insurance company and with the Connecticut statute to protect the town. So um, obviously, if you can, if you get it, find an attorney, you can sue anybody. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's basically what can happen. But based on the statutes, it's the owner that is responsible. So, um, okay, anything else we want to uh, say about that? The, the other thing regarding um, parking, there is that asphalt piece of, uh, piece of property that the um, skaters use. That could, when it's not being used by the skaters, also be converted to parking. So... Um, that has a lip around it, though. It does. It does have a lip, but it would have to be modified, you know. I, I, yeah, I I don't know unless they would just I don't know how they would do it, but yeah. Well, the lip holds the water when they fill oh, right, the right, 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 right. You're right. Yeah. There is some talk about putting a um, a skating rink up at the country club. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rink. yeah. That would make more sense because at the same time they have said that that area is really small and confining for it's skaters. And it, it has to be repaired. It, it has, has to be repaired and it's going to be very costly and so mm -hmm. so thank you for that uh, point. Okay. Um, Did we ever find out what the maximum limit is for parking? I mean, is there a capacity that we're, that we're, looking, mm -hmm. that we're not, thinking might, it doesn't sound like. No, there really isn't a lot of parking there. There, I mean, you just have the first row of parking, maybe it's what? 10, 15 parking areas. Yeah. Then there's another row on the other side, which is another 10, 15 parking yeah. areas. Camden has a lot that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but I can look into that for you for the next meeting. Uh, regarding the, I'm going to have um, Patricia McEwen speak on the cross country team proposal, uh, proposed projects, and update on other troop initiatives. And I think it's important for us <clears throat> to get the troops to come to us and to tell us what projects are in place so that it can be approved by the board. So the Board of Selectmen has the final approval. Right. Yeah. And that's been um, interesting because every time I, um, I spoke with Tom Luciani came to our last meeting right. mm -hmm. and he mentioned there was an Eagle Scout project that had been approved. Um, that it was on the red trail, the color coded okay, trails. Okay, right. Yeah, we don't have anything on record. In Rocky, yeah. So um, that's all he really knew about it. He just said it was it was targeted for a spring start time, and he suggested having that Felix, um, one of the uh, scout members, come in and speak to us if we wanted more details. So I said that I would get back to him on that. Perfect. Um, the other Eagle Scout project that was mentioned tonight is just yet another one. So I, I, I would like to get a running list of right, them. Exactly. What troops are leading what? What has been already proposed? And, and that's been a and little again, bit all over the place. Right. And they're knowledge. talking about uh, properties owned by the Land Trust and owned by the Park Association. So really, the, the Board of Selectmen um, doesn't you know, have any preview over them, but at the same time, I think it's important for us to know so that we have a running list. Going forward versus... You know, because we're, wa we're working together, mm -hmm. collaborating right. with them. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. so, so I might take him up on having um, Felix come to the yes. next one. Yes, that, that would be great. Probably help Maybe us for out. the next meeting yes. in November? I'll, try to get, I'll get his approval and then we can put it on okay. the agenda if he Perfect. agrees to it. Perfect. Um, the other piece of it was the... Um, the trail runners, the cross country, Emily High School cross country team, and Sam Mahler, who is the president of this club, uh, put together a beautiful portfolio proposal. 
and it's um, he lists his name, the vice president, and the teacher representative, Tom Jacobs. It's a table of contents. I'm going to review this more thoroughly for the next meeting and bring out the highlights. But in a nutshell, he did exactly what we asked him to do. He prioritized five trails with a brief description as how he'd like to, um, you know, start with each one of those projects. His plans, very brief, but. Um, I won't show that with you yet because we'll, um, yeah. oops, I just got this at 5.30, I'll yeah. absorb it and yeah. then yeah. report back Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. But at least we have something. We have something. And, and at the same time, once it's completed and it's approved by us, then we'll move it forward so that the, the Board of Selectmen can see it. They have to do a final Right, and we'll just make recommendations right. based on the right. information right. that right. he exactly. provided. Exactly. And he did even come up with a few dollar figures and um, things that he was supply list. Yep. So that's my first glance yep. report. That's great. That's great. So um, we'll put that we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting. Yep. I and agree. as well as contacting you Felix. said Felix? Yeah, his name came up earlier tonight too. L I U. Oh L I U. Felix Lou. Okay. All right. Nancy, you went to the FOI meeting uh, last month, and uh, do you want to talk about what you learned? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I only have <laughs> two minutes of information. It's very common sense. If anybody wants a set of our minutes, they're available. Mm -hmm. They're filed with the town. Mm -hmm. I do have one question. What if a group of us said, why don't we go over to the diner and really talk about this talk part? I think that's a violation. If if you know, if we go as a group to the diner and say let's talk or about even it. Some of us? Yes, yes. It it's, would be a violation. It's not a noticed or special meeting. Yeah, it has to be so a special can. meeting, it has to be a noticed meeting. So we can talk to each other in um, any way about it. I, you know, I also went to that Freedom of Information Act. I, I, I don't know the answer to the question, but I was very interested in that answer because from conservation point of view, same kind of thing. Sometimes when the camera's on, I can't speak how I would normally mm -hmm. speak. Right. So I feel like um, I feel like the man who was sitting up here said, if, it's, if you're on the same, do you know this? If you're on the same political party, you are same allowed. parties okay. Yeah, you uh, are same, allowed. Same parties okay. Different parties, different boards are okay. Yeah. yeah. So but you could, depending on their, which I didn't even know that this would be a partisan issue, you know, this dog park. I didn't even know. I don't know if it is or isn't. Mm -hmm. But if, and I don't know it was just a party you are. Yeah. But anyway, no, because I, I, I feel like yeah. that's a really good, yeah. Yeah. from my perspective, I'm much more comfortable in that kind of setting than here saying, well, you know. Yeah. And, and my understanding so. is that if you are going to have a meeting, um, and a meeting is defined as you know, three people, I believe it's three people getting together, it has to be noticed because it can't be done in private. Right. That's the whole right. point of it being yes. a public right. meeting. Mm -hmm. So right. you have to have minutes and it has to be noticed yep. so people can. Um, can attend mm -hmm. and watch what's going on mm -hmm. and, and know what what you discussed. Right. right. Yeah. So it can right. be done in secret. It's really yeah. like is a it a yeah. right. Right. secret. The question is, can it be done informally and apparently? If not. you are at um, a restaurant and you happen to bump into somebody, you can have you know somewhat of a discussion. But if you plan to have a meeting, uh -huh. uh, you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Be, yeah. It like you can't come back into this room already have a dis having have had a decision, decision made. made. No, yeah. I, I wasn't even going that far. Well, well just that, just that, that's just what I took away the from the present yeah. cons of something. He was so informed. So when I wrote to you yes. about the dark part, yeah. yeah. that was in didn't completely in its order. But no, 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 that wasn't a meeting. Sense. That wasn't a meeting. That's just sharing information. Wasn't a violation. To no, but and and if somebody wanted, if, if somebody wanted to, those those that email, right. you know, it would be available for them. So right, I didn't right. say anything inappropriate, right. you know, you were just giving me information. The email would not be filed with the town. Right. It wouldn't be part of the minutes. So it 
you know, it wasn't anything. No, it was you. You were just giving me information on what you had found out. You know, um, so it really wasn't a meeting. It was you were just giving me information. So most of what they deal with has nothing to do with what we right. Do. Yeah, we right. have to protect prisoners' rights. There are like ten different right. situations. Yeah. Um, I don't think perhaps with the bench we talk about crisis mm -hmm. and. Um, it's more yeah. likely that yeah. some of the other yeah. commissions in town would ever get involved. Yeah. So we're, we're planning, we're just planning to our meetings. So you're giving me information, you're sending, saying, oh, can we put this on the agenda? Can we, can, you know, I mean, that's what we do, you know. Right. I mean, otherwise, I mean, otherwise you, know, who's, who's, you know, who's going to get right. together and put the agenda right. together and right yeah i mean yeah. i have to talk to you and say hey did you contact yes. the boy scouts right. you know and i'm going to put it on the agenda did you you know you mentioned you were going to yeah. go to the dog park did you go to the dog park will you be able to talk about it yeah i mean yeah. you know i think that that's all legal you know yeah that's fact finding it's not you know right so anyway um thank you very much for your report <laughs> Okay, so uh, regarding the uh, benches and other markers, I did have a conversation with the, the town attorney, uh, Jerry Weiner, and um, he stated that the bottom line, and we knew this, that the, the, um, the Board of Selectmen has the final say on the type of bench, the type of markers, the type of structures, that are um, put up, at, you know, in, on any town property. Uh, of course, we knew that. So, um, so what we're working towards is perhaps having ta the town park association, the or the park department, um, have a copy of the document so that when somebody does go um, to them or comes to town hall looking for uh, a bench or a tree or <coughs> a flagpole or any other uh, structure that they have something to refer to. Um, so it would be with the park department. And then what we're looking at is perhaps um, downsizing the application. So when the person comes looking to do something, we give them the app application and everything is really on one page mm -hmm. and not make it so wordy. Mm -hmm. So, um, Just like guidelines and well, an application? Well, it, it, you know, very brief. Yeah. You know, very, very brief. As soon as it's, you know, it's being um, worked at, on, um, it's being reviewed. As soon as it's uh, completed, then um, I will bring it back here uh, for us to look at. Mm -hmm. And then it'll probably, uh, you know, you vote on it and then you we can decide to move it to the board of select. Okay? All right. So then it looks like with the plan of conservation and development, um, we're moving, we, we're, we're collaborating with the Boy Scouts, we're, we're collaborating with the um, Woodbridge Park Association, we're collaborating also with the Land Trust. And with conservation, we, we really want to, um, I know I spoke to uh, Jason, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd like to maybe schedule a joint meeting. Yeah, we want to do that also. Yeah, so if you can go back and find out when we can schedule sure. a joint okay. meeting, so uh, we could start working on labeling mm -hmm. the types of properties that we have in town, so that we can decide, oh, this property is good for this, mm -hmm. you know, for farming, this property is good for recreation. This part, this is good for a dog park. You know, I think that that would be our next goal is to to do that. I know that conservation has uh, discussed it. And right. You yes. Know, have you gone? Have you done a lot with it, or you're just? No. Our next step is to do some field trips and, and try to apply our. Um, like a matrix to right, yeah, right, 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 to figure out how to rate which property, you know, right, so the exactly. Same kind of thing. And we've said that we want to do it in collaboration, with right, right. Yeah. So you can let us know when you yeah. have the field trips, and yeah. if we're available, we can 
you know, go yeah, with you. Great. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, maybe in January, February, if we could, okay. I, you know, schedule Jason, yeah. a couple of meetings together. Uh, I think that that's the the next. Um, it's a good step. You know, biggest push yes. forward. And uh, if you can report back to us on what you know, what else you are doing with the conservation, okay. because actually, actually, our goals uh, are should be the same. They are. They're right, the same. They're aligned. Yes. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I so that you have a very high priority on open space. I have heard yes, people we made say. Yeah, you've got all this land. What are you going to yeah. do with yeah. it? Right. Do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That yeah. should be yeah. 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 a high priority. Yeah. yeah. Appreciation of yeah. the beautiful open space. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, and um, other business? Any other business? Uh, let me just look at my notes here. I know I, I have notes. And um, I do also, so we have for the Boy Scouts, we have Buck, uh, Bob Tucker for six, the Troop 63 and Ted. Uh, Parseris, thank you. And Parcours. Troop 907 is Tom Luciani. These are the, the uh, troop leaders, um, troop masters. And Troop 941, which is based at Benai Jacob, we have Leslie and Peter Zakin. Okay. Okay. We, that wasn't on the. No. Okay. Right. Okay. No, it wasn't. And, no. And I'm sorry, what was that last one? Um, troop, troop 941. It's oh, yeah, you did. Uh, did I send it yeah. to you? Okay. All yeah. right. Good. All right. And um, so I mentioned earlier about the, the uh, trail master um, and, and renewing the blaze marks on the trails. So, you know, right now we don't have a trail master. Um, we did receive a copy of a letter from Michelle Cohen um, from the town that she wrote to the town to Jerry Shaw regarding the dog park and she um, is, is in support I'm not going to read the letter but I'm just going to let you know that she's in support of the of the um, of the dog park and let's see. It looks like with storm preparedness, um, there there's work that's being done with uh, UI and for the, with the first responders. And we are going to have uh, Mary Ellen Morocco come to us and talk to us. Probably going to move it to January, the January meeting. Um, so we'll put that on for January, and uh, it seems like the um, people, the residents are st are still interested in the pool, the Country Club of Woodbridge Pool for next season. So um, you know, I guess the, the uh, Board of Selectmen is going to review. Right. Now, what we did was we voted, uh, we authorized replacing the heater and also doing repairs to the, uh, the surface. Okay. Okay. To the pool? To the pool. Yeah. Okay. And you're looking at the viability of uh, having it reopened for next season? Yeah, it's the it's feeling, the general feeling of the board that we'd like to have it open next season. Uh, one of the members wanted to look at the, um, the projections going forward. So we have an idea of what the numbers were. Okay. And uh, we also have an update on the district animal shelter. I guess there's water line to the facility. So I guess before they didn't have hot water, so now they have, they have potable water. Potable water. Okay, so now they have potable water uh, thanks to the steep grant that they received. And uh, I understand there's a doggy daycare that's being Consider? There was a doggy daycare that was approved by the TPZ. Um, I think it's called Happy Happy Homes. 
uh, which Happy would, Tales. Happy Trails, <laughs> which will be right next to the uh, animal shelter. Yeah. And there's some mixed feelings about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, TPC is, is re, re, plan, planning on revising its rules. And one of the things that they were planning on revising was the acreage required for a boarding kennel. And they wanted 200,000 square feet for a boarding kennel and 80,000 square feet for um, doggy daycare. Now, those rules are not in effect yet. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, they approved this. Oh, OK. And OK. Well, thank you for that. <coughs> OK. All right. And uh, so for the next meeting, we we have for the agenda. What do we have, uh, Patty? For November, we have the well, Felix Liu. Yeah. Well, you're going to try to I'm going to reach him. out to him and see if he is available to come. Okay. And he can update us on his Eagle Scout project okay. details. Okay. All right. And um, perhaps you want to contact uh, then, the other um, Scoutmasters? I could. Okay. Sure. And try to get them to attend? Yeah. And to if, present? If they have something to present. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll you know. ask them if they have projects in the works and yeah. if they do, then if they could come. And how we can communicate better with yeah. them? Okay. All right. We have a couple of items I'd like to add. What's that? Um, the creation of a new park, an official, ex um, it's something in existence now, um, but it is not, there's no signage and there's no publicity. I think they're afraid of vandalism. What park? You know, the uh, lime kiln on the corner of Dillon and Litchfield Turnpike. Mm -hmm. There's one that's intact in the woods. And it's very beautiful. I did an article about it for the okay. local paper. Okay. It has a vault that's complete. The bricks haven't collapsed the way okay. they have in this mess yeah. on the corner. Yeah. Uh, and there are other things. It's a race course, water, and lots of things to see and learn about that and the whole history of this. It was actually a famous Woodbridge scam. So I think it would make. So make signage, looking for signage, you're looking for? Well, Develop it a little more. Okay. Like this exists and uh, help people to find it. You could be standing okay. next to this thing or above it rather and not see it because. And the name of it again? It's the other kiln. The other kiln? It's actually, it was a cement kiln. Okay. It only operated once. Okay. Because it was, as I said, okay. it was the scam. And the other thing I'd like to talk about is the feasibility of using what's really a lake at the country club for ice skating as I grew up with something like that in okay. a park okay. in my town. Well, you said that they were talking about that. Now, this right? is different. This is not a portable. No, it's they were talking about a, a something port similar. A portable lake yeah. which had refrigeration. Okay. All right. That would be very small. This lake yeah. is huge. Right. Um, and I, people are fishing there, yeah. so I know that it's... At the country club? Theme, yes, and what I remember was the bonfire and hot chocolate, and it was lovely. Little Norman Rockwell's okay. moment in okay. the town of Westbury on Long Island. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can talk about the okay. possibility of okay. that. I know lots of other groups have to be involved. Yes. In like yes. That. Okay. I mean, the winter will be over by the time they decide it's a good idea. Okay, and the other item was, oh, the the uh, project. Yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the boy yeah. for the uh, cross country. Yeah. Okay, cross country. Okay, I'll put the agenda together okay. with, the, and then I'll send it to you. Okay. And then you can modify it since I'm not going to be here. Okay. Uh, for um, the November and December meeting, so but I'll work with you on you know, putting the agendas together. That sounds good. Okay, so um, uh, either you or, or Marty Alpern will, will uh, be chance to cancel the December meeting? 
Uh, the December meeting is on the 18th, and I guess depending on you know what everybody's you, availability. Everybody's availability, and if you have items for the agenda, you can make that decision in November. Okay. Okay. It's December, yeah. July, and August. Yeah. Are often. Right. Right. No, that's yeah. that's Blur that's away. something you could you know. Okay. We'll see how. Oh, you know, you could let me know and and. Uh, you can discuss that. That, that could be um, next month. Next month, yeah. you know, discussion on uh, possibility of canceling the December meeting. Okay. All right. So um, adjournment. Question. Yes. One yes. Quick question. Uh -huh. The walkthrough that we did in the summer for the daycare. Right. It's. Um, do you have any recommendations? No. It was just. It was just to walk through and to see the space that's available in the building in case. There would be a, a domino domino effect of um, the the um, rec, uh, the um, facility, the recreation facility, the fitness center, moving to say the country club or to to the firehouse or you know. So then, what what is available there? You know, for um, for space. You know what's available. We also did a tour of the police department. So if that's something that you would like to see in the future, also I'll you know talk to the police chief and I can schedule you know that for you because most of the people that that uh, attended that uh, walkthrough, uh, Terry is now on the board of selectmen, and um, one person resigned. He moved to California, and so. Um, well, if something comes up where we feel the need that we should see it. See it, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, All right, may I have a motion to adjourn? I make motion. Okay, so Nancy okay. makes the motion. Second? Second. Leslie seconds. Okay, so it's uh, 8, uh, 7.59? Let's see. No, 7.54 to be exact. Okay. All right. Thank you all for attending, and uh, I look Thank forward you. to working with you again.